Hello, welcome to Jason the Millennial. My name is Jason, speaking here in my basement in the great state of Kansas. Um, in this video, I'm just going to show off some uh, items that I bought recently, some CDs I bought at Walmart, and two vinyls that I bought on Amazon. Anyway, so not a lot here, uh, just kind of a small video showcasing some things that I kind of bought on the whim. Uh, first, we'll talk about some CDs. I bought four CDs from Walmart, just looking at the CD section. Funny, the last time I looked at the CD section, there was like almost no CDs, like, I don't know what happened, but this time I, when I went into Walmart, um, they had a lot of CDs, and a lot of new CDs I hadn't seen there, so, which was nice, so I got to browse through them and buy some more. Um, mostly when I buy CDs nowadays, I, I usually buy, um, especially at Walmart, I usually just buy best of compilations of, uh, bands that I like that I think, well, I don't have any of their albums, but I'll buy, like, a best of anyways, so that's normally when I buy nowadays on CDs, so, no exception here. Like first one I got is Journey's Greatest Hits, the band Journey, which I haven't really gotten into their album so much. I listened to one album, Escape, and I gave it a 10 out of 10. thought it was a great album, amazing album, one of my favorite albums I've listened to anyways. And so I definitely need to listen to more Journey stuff, though I know their sound changed, I think, from the beginning they were more of a blues rock band or something, or a hard rock band, and then they changed more into the pop band that I know and I, and I really enjoy. Anyways, but yeah, so when I saw this, I was like, yeah, I got to get their greatest hits. Anyways, and listen to this at some point. Um, obviously, Don't Stop Believing, Wheel in the Sky, Faithfully, um, Any Way You Want It, Who's Crying Now, or some of the songs I, I know. These are songs I know very well. Um, Open Arms. Um, anyways, there's 16 songs in here. Those are the songs I'm really familiar with. And maybe there's some more once I listen to them. But I uh, definitely love Steve Perry's vocals. I think he's a really good singer. I know the guitar player is really good as well, though I don't think about his guitar playing because I think about the great, you know, ballads. I, I love him as these, you know, obviously Don't Stop Believing is probably the most played song. Super catchy pop song. Um, but, you know, when you, I think of them, I think of like Faithfully and Open Arms, these great piano ballads. Uh, yeah, very nice uh, kind of a soft rock band, even though I think they weren't always. But yeah, definitely, definitely need to get this one. I saw it. Uh, another best of, um, I got of, uh, the very best of the Rolling Stones, 1964 to 1971, uh, which I have to say, this is one of the most, uh, bland album covers I've ever seen. Uh, not much gravity going into this album, uh, as far as that's concerned. Uh, it looks like it's a compilation from 2011. Um, yeah, but I was like, you know, I only have like one Rolling Stones album, their last album, uh, uh, what was it called? Uh, something Diamonds, uh, which actually is my favorite Rolling Stones album. I listened to all their albums. That's my favorite. I'm not a big Rolling Stones fan. They do have a couple, you know, pretty good albums like, uh, Beggar's Banquet, I think is good. Let It Bleed, um, uh, it's good, um, I'm forgetting now some of the songs, some of the albums I like, but uh, I like some of those albums. I don't love them. I like them fine. They got some good stuff on them for sure. Um, and, and like I said, the last album I thought actually was really good. Uh, I gave that the best rating, um, which surprised a lot of people. I'm not a big fan of some of their more bluesy rock stuff. Um, I like more of their, I like more of their rock stuff. I even like some of their more sixty. That's why I, I like this. Uh, when I got, I saw this, I was like, oh. This is kind of my favorite period of the Rolling Stones, uh, the sixties into the early seventies. I think some of their best music. And anyway, so and I looked at what they had back here. It has some of my favorite Rolling Stone songs. I mean, um, you know, "Time Is on My Side." I can't get no satisfaction. I mean, yeah, obviously, big big hit. Um, "Get Off My Cloud." I really like. Um, uh, let's see, "Paint It Black." Uh, another great one. "Under My Thumb." "Ruby Tuesday." One of my fa all time favorite. I mean, this has my favorite Rolling Stones songs on it. Ruby Tuesday, um, Jumpin' Jeff Flash is fine. Uh, we got Sympathy for the Devil, one of my favorite Rolling Stones songs. Give Me Shelter, another. These are all like top 10 Rolling Stones songs for me. Um, you Can't Always Get What You Want is my favorite Rolling Stones song. And Ruby Tuesday is my second favorite. So, I mean, you got, I think, uh, um, I want to say um, Sympathy for the Devil is like my third or fourth favorite. So, I mean, you got my favorite Rolling Stones, Rolling Stones songs here. Uh, Honky Tonk Women, Brown Sugar, Wild Horses. Anyways, uh, 16 songs on here. 
uh, pretty good compilation, I think, overall. Hopefully, of course, I know sometimes these compilation albums aren't always the best. Um, but hopefully this is pretty good sounding and everything. But yeah, I thought I need more Rolling Stones music in my uh, my collection. Might as well get a Grace fix since I'm probably not going to buy a lot of their albums anyways. But love some of their music. Uh, then I got this. I'm not sure what to say about this. It's a compilation album of some kind. Uh, it's just called, it's called If You Leave Me Now by Chicago. It looks like it's the title. It says If You Leave Me Now up here, which is one of their big songs. It just says Chicago on it. Uh, so this isn't like a studio album. This is, um, because I was looking at the back and I was like, these are definitely songs from different albums. Uh, I don't know exactly if it's a greatest hits necessarily. It doesn't say greatest hits on it. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly what kind of compilation this is. Um, uh, one of my friends can probably tell me. They know more about, you know, these kind of stuff. Like Briar has a lot of these kind of, you know, he knows a lot about these compilation albums. So maybe Briar can tune me in if this is a good compilation I got. But again, when I gave him Walmart, they're not usually not very much money. So, but like you got If You Leave Me Now, of course, great song. Saturday in the Park, Feeling Stronger Every Day, I'm, uh, 25 or 6 to 4. Which I know comes off their second album. Um, Baby, what a big surprise. Um, let's see. Does anybody really know what time it is? Uh, some of the songs that I really know from this. 11 songs overall. Not a lot of songs on here. Of course, Chicago is one of my favorite bands, actually. And they got their, their song collection. One of my favorite. I mean, they got so many amazing songs. I love their overall sound. Love the harmonies. Um, the vocal work on all like the three major singers at the beginning were great. Uh, of course, that was more of their blues or their jazz rock period. And then they went to this more uh, soft rock pop uh, period in the 80s, which I like too. I like a lot of their stuff, which is, I believe, on here as well. So, um, yeah, so I don't know. Overall, a lot of great songs in here. So I thought I might as well get it. Chicago. All right, last CD I got. Um, it's funny, I have a bunch of Bean Crosby albums, uh, vinyl. My mom bought me this set of 48 Bean Crosby albums from, you know, the 1930s and 40s period, um, and which I, uh, I have it, I can see it right now, it's over there in a the box. Um, that I'll listen to at some point, it's just there's a lot of albums to get through. Um, but she got that for me for my last birthday anyways. And I do like Bean Crosby's voice. I think he has a really good, you know, old style voice. He's not someone I listen to a lot, of course, because he's a little bit older style than what I listen to. Um, but I do appreciate it, especially his Christmas songs. I think his Christmas songs are really good. And in the in the albums I have, I don't have a Christmas album of his, which is funny because I think he's most well known for his maybe Christmas music. Uh, he's one of the best. I think he's put out a bunch of Christmas albums like that. But anyways, I saw, I don't know if they're, why they're, if they're starting to put Christmas, I saw a couple of Christmas stuff out and I love Christmas albums. I usually buy those up when I see them. But when I saw this, I thought, ah, I need to get this. And this is Bean Crosby, Ultimate Christmas. Um, yeah, so it has 28 Christmas songs on it. So I thought, wow, that's pretty good. Uh, 28 songs, um, some by Christmas songs, some by Bean Crosby. And I thought, yeah, I, I need a Christmas album from Bean Crosby. Uh, he's, to me, one of my favorite singers when it comes to Christmas music. Um, so this has all the big stuff. Of course, it begins with White Christmas. That is the most famous song of all time. One of the most, um, I know it had like the record for like most number one, or it was on the number one, it was number one for the most weeks in a row or something like that. So it's one of the biggest songs of all time, funny enough. Um, but yeah, it has all the classics that um, I've heard him sing, you know. Uh, yeah, so I, I'd definitely be excited to listen, especially during Christmas time. But yeah, I'm glad to finally, I, I finally got uh, me to cry. I, I know he has a really good album. Maybe if I find on vinyl, I'd probably still buy his, that one Christmas album with him with like a, he has like a Santa hat on. Um, I see that a lot of times during Christmas time. So I'll probably grab that on vinyl. But at least I have this on CD, which has a really good collection of Christmas songs. All right, then I got two vinyl that I bought on Amazon. And I don't know, I'm in, I'm in this, I, I, one of the things I like to collect is comedy albums from the, uh, like, 60s, 70s period. Um, I do, I do enjoy a good comedy album, a good stand-up comedy. I watch a lot of stand-up comedy specials and stuff. And so it's kind of fun to go back and see some of the greats back in the day, um, do it anyway. So I got two comedy albums. Uh, this one is the Steve Martin one. Um, I got the wrap on it, or the... I'll pick it out. 
Um, yeah, Steve Martin, a wild and crazy guy um, is this one. And this is one of the most famous pictures I've seen. I, he had a book that I read a little while ago. He came out with a book called like Standing Up or something like that, um, which was kind of an autobiography that Steve Martin wrote about himself, but only about his stand-up years. He basically just covered, and he, I mean, he covered his growing up, and he covered how he got into stand-up, and um, he wrote for like, uh, um, what is it? He wrote for a TV show, um, Laughing, I think, or something. Uh, anyways, and so the book kind of talks about that, and talks about his early career and getting the movies, but then doesn't, doesn't talk about his whole movie career. Just basically talks about his career up to when he stopped doing stand-up and was just a movie star. But um, but this is a photo on the book that he wrote, um, I think called something about standing up or something standing up. Anyways, um, so he must have got off this album cover. Um, and Wild and Crazy Guy, of course, was a famous uh, catchphrase he had on Saturday Night Live. Uh, him and Dan Aykroyd had this famous recurring sketch where these, I think they're these two brothers from the Czech Republic or something, or Czechoslovakia at the time. And uh, they were in America and they don't understand the American culture and they're trying to pick up women. It's kind of a whole sketch and idea anyways. And and uh, very goofy sketch. And uh, C. Martin would say, we're two wild and crazy guys. And they would do this for some reason. And they had these thick accents, um, him and them, Dan Aykroyd. Anyways, but a very, very popular sketch, very funny. I, I used to love it as a kid. In fact, um, I was a big, I was a big Steve Martin fan growing up. Here's the inside, it's kind of cool. It's him on the guitar. Um, back you have King Tut, which is a famous, one of his most famous skits he did on Star Live. You know, he had this whole song, King Tut, dun, 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 King Tut, uh, which is, I think, a pretty popular song when he, when he did it on uh, Star Live. And I used to love it as a kid. Anyways, so this is definitely during like his uh, 70s, you know, Star Night Live period when he was on Star Night Live a lot. Um, and he used to do, and he was like the most popular stand-up in, in the 70s period. Uh, he would like sell out these big arena shows. He was like one of the first, I feel like, comedians that would sell out these like arenas or whatever you call them and have these big shows. And he would wear these white, he was famous for wearing all white suit and he'd put the bunny ears on, part of his comedy act. Anyways, um, but yeah, um, I'm guessing King Tut, yeah, King Tut's the last one on here. So you have the King Tut song on here. You have uh, A Wild and Crazy Guy. So I don't know if that's part of the Sound Live sketch here. So I'm not sure what exactly all this is. If these are skits that you did on Sound Live or this is a standard material. I'm guessing maybe a combination. I haven't listened to it yet, but uh, I'm guessing this is probably one of his most popular records. I, this is the third album I've gotten from Steve Martin recently. So, and I, I'm enjoying the other two albums I've listened to already. Anyway, so interested in listening to that one as well. Um, the other stand-up comedian that I have a lot of his albums, probably the one, the one I have the most albums from. And I got, and again, I saw these on Amazon for not that much money, so that's why I just grabbed them up. So I thought, oh, I better grab them while I can before I can't find them. Uh, and this is a Bob Newhart. This is it. Um, and like I said, I have... At least three Bob Newhart albums. So this is, I think, my fourth Bob Newhart album that I've gotten. And Bob Newhart, another guy, he just passed away recently, just a couple months ago, anyways, in, in, in his upper 90s. Uh, was one of the most popular stand comedians in the 60s period. And in fact, one of his albums, um, the, the Button Down Mind of Bob Newhart, won the Grammy for Album of the Year in like 1960. And I have that album. And that's my favorite album from his. But uh, so I haven't heard this one yet, so I'm not sure what, what to take. But, um, but yeah, so I, anytime I see a Bob Newhart album, I usually grab it because I do like Bob Newhart's stand-up material. It's very different, and I do love the 60s style because it's, it's very clean comedy. There's not cursing. There's not a lot of vulgar jokes, so I, I like that. I like those kind of jokes, and he is pretty, I love his style, where his style is always, usually he's, you know, he's having a, it's almost like he's playing a character in a skit. But you only hear his part of it, or he's in a phone conversation, but you only hear his part of the phone conversation. And somehow it's funny the way he reacts to the other side. And you don't know what the other side is saying, but by his reactions, you can kind of get an idea in your mind what the other side is saying. And it's hard to explain, but I really love this style. I think it's a very funny style. So, yeah, I'm glad to get another Bob Newhart album in my vinyl list anyway. So, 
yeah, that's my uh, collection today. Not a lot, but still thought something might show up. Uh, and feel free to comment if you know anything about these uh, albums. Uh, and if you like them and all that, love to read your comments. And just thank you for watching this video. Thank you for liking it. And thank you to all my subscribers for, for supporting the channel. I appreciate you all and hope you have a good day.